Hi, Dave here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the S3 with Traktor Pro 3 and OBS to be able to do your live DJ set at no extra cost. So the good thing is when you buy the Traktor Control S3, you get Traktor Pro 3 with it. And those two things combined with OBS, which is free, is all you'll need to go on and stream your DJ sets. I'm going to keep it nice and simple and show you how to do it on Mac and Windows. So I've got you all covered. I'm going to take you through how to install, how to set up and stream live. And you can do it via YouTube, Facebook or whatever social media sites you want. So without further ado, let's get started. So with Mac, it's slightly different to Windows. Windows is a bit easier. So I'm going to start with Mac. First thing you need to do is download Soundflower. Just type in Soundflower in Google. I always go to the rogue channel just so I get the right github link and if you look up there you just can click on that go down to where it says just looking click on the github link and then the soundflower dmg and allow once it's downloaded we're going to double click it when you do this installation it will fail the first time it's just the way it is and it's actually supposed to happen I mean it's not supposed to happen but it's actually what happens so you're not doing it wrong so if you follow this exactly then you won't have a problem go to security and go to general and down there open anyway then we're gonna to go to a normal install and before we install it just close system preferences there is a reason for that it's weird and I'll try and explain it actually I can't it's weird but just close that while it's installing. So it says it's failed, but it did come up with a box to then allow Matt, whoever Matt is. Okay, keep it, and then we're gonna reinstall it and it will be successful the second time. You can see it's not in there at the moment, but now we've allowed Matt, we can just reinstall it and success. Move that to trash, and then you can see at the top that it's there. The next thing you wanna do is download OBS. So just search OBS in Google and you'll see it says obsproject.com. That's what we want. We can use Streamlab OBS and other programs, but I use OBS Studio and it's nice and simple. Then download whichever OS you have. I have Mac and then install it the normal way. Now you have Soundflower and OBS set up. We want to set up an aggregate. To do that, go into your audio MIDI setup. Then what we want to do is set up an aggregate. So we've got the S3 plugged in and we're going to create a device create aggregate device and then we just double click and call it something we're going to know then down here we have a list of options so we're going to go to tractor control s3 and we're also going to go to soundflower 2 channel going to make sure that the clock source is s3 and i'm running at 48 kilohertz we just need to close that then we're going to open up tractor and we're going to open up preferences and in our audio setup where we would normally have the controller we're going to change it to obs s3 so in there is the soundflower and the tractor control s3 in output it's done it for me which is very nice but in here we'd have our main left and right headphone left and right as you would normally see but this is the one output record set that to our obs four and five now where that four and five came from is the aggregate that we set up so it's obs s3 four and five and what i also want to do is i want to have my mic on deck d so if i turn the mic on it's going into a live input and you can see that register as well and i can turn it up one two 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 and then we have our microphone as well we can close that now and we're good to go on tractor lastly we need to set up obs now just so you know obs can be a little bit funny and if you don't use it for a while for about five to ten minutes um it might just close down and say it's crashed but i've never ever had a glitch when i've been streaming live so yeah fingers crossed that stays the same let's make this full screen and this is what you're going to get presented with so we've got a scene and our sources now i'm not going to go through loads of scenes I just want to make it as simple as possible for you to then do what you need to do. If you want to see a more complicated version with overlays and scrolling text and anything like that, again, let me know in the comments and we can do something about that. But if I hit plus, I'm going to do a video capture. So my video capture, I can call it what I want, but I'm going to call it overhead. 
and click OK. And then I'm going to have my device. And I've got between my FaceTime camera, I've got a Brio over my Dex, and I've got this black magic, which you're seeing now. So you see that? Hello. And then it's set maximum to 1280. 720 so that's all you need to do to set up one camera you can set up multiple cameras and layer them however you want if you do want to resize it you can just click hold and drag this in and out and one thing that i wish i knew at the start if you hold option or alt depending on your windows and then you can actually crop it as well so if i really wanted to get this really tight in just the controller and gunter then I can then just do that and show you that I have not set up my S3 level. Next, we want to do an output capture. And I'm just going to leave it called that. You can call it whatever you want. Click OK. And we're going to have Soundflower 2 channel. Click OK. That's all you need to set up. We're going to go through settings now. Um, but if I go and load up a song and I press play, you see it's registering in the S3 and it's registering here. So I'm going to stop that. And we're going to go to settings. Now, there's loads of ways of doing audio. There's loads of ways of doing the video stuff. I'm just showing you the way I do it, the way I know it works. People might say it's wrong. It's not. It's just different to what other people do. Uh, but there's loads of videos out there to set up OBS in optimal ways. And this is mine. So here, this is where we're going to put our Facebook and I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to put something in there in a minute. Output. Now I stream at a bit rate around here. Uh, it all depends on how good your computer is, you know, what the spec is, how good the internet is, all that sort of thing. It does really come into play because OBS is power hungry. You know, it does use quite a lot of your CPU. Uh, luckily, I've got a pretty decent machine I'm running here, but on my laptop, it glitches and I don't use it. On keyframe, I put it to two. Now, in recording, what you really want is FLV, because if something drops out, you can still get that back. But I choose to have it on MP4 because I never record this OBS. It's just the way I work. And I'll show you what to do in a second. Now, audio-wise, I leave it on 48 hertz, and I don't have anything enabled. I just don't. Again, we are just looking at the S3 and streaming. That's it, because everything that goes through the S3 get streamed. I don't care about audio on our computers or anything like that. Video, we really want this to be set the same, okay? And 1280 by 720 is the maximum I'm going to get out output wise. So therefore my scale, my canvas is going I'm just going to keep the same. Again, depending on your computer, if you can run at 60, fantastic. Um, but I'm going to keep it at 30 because it works. If you're running through uh, an actual camera that's running at 25 FPS, then great. Then use that. Hotkeys I don't bother with. Advanced. I just leave as standard. Now I made that MP4. So what I can do now is I can press play, as you can see the feed out. Now if I hit start record, and I just play this for a second, I can drop it out, bring it back in. Stop recording. And now what I can do is if I go to movies and I load this up. Now you will see that it was out of sync between audio and visual. Now I'm running cameras through encoders and then into computer. So if you're running a webcam, it will be virtually in sync. Uh, not in sync, that's a different matter, but in sync. So if you do get a problem with sync, go to advanced, and here is our offset. Now I have to change mine by a stupid amount because again, I'm running through a Canon G7X Mark III into a Blackmagic A10 Mini into a computer. Um, webcams is going to be pretty much give or take minus 100 around that. So you just need to play with that. I suggest just clapping or moving the turntable and then that way you'll be able to get this in sync if that's something that you need to do. Once we've done that, we need to go to YouTube, create, go live. I'm going to set up a new one. I'm going to call this test. And then what we've got 
is we've got our YouTube URL, but we don't need that because if you look in our settings, we've got the YouTube URL there, but we do need to copy the stream key. Don't give that to anyone because it means they can stream onto your site, which you may or may not want. <laughs> and all you need to do is paste that, click OK, hit start streaming, and it will give you a readout here. And then you'll see this starts to load up. There you'll see my video. And then when I'm ready, I can just click go live and you're live. <laughs> That's it. I know that seems like there's a lot of steps. However, if you actually take it a little bit at a time, it's actually really quite simple. To finish, it's just you just click stop streaming and that's it. And you can record at the same time, play it back, do whatever you need to do, and it will stop here as well. So now we're in Windows, what we need to do is go to Preferences, Audio Setup, and we're just going to choose the S3. It's so much more simple. You don't have to set up an aggregate. We can click Close, go to OBS. So we're going to do exactly the same as what we did on the Mac. Click the source, add a video capture device. And that's me. <laughs> Hello. And we're going to go to Blackmagic Design, click OK. And I'm just going to quickly resize this for your viewing pleasure. So you see that was exactly the same as what we saw on the Mac. And then we're going to click an output capture and we're going to click OK. And we're going to select line, which is track to control S3. What we don't want to do if you're using a webcam with a microphone is you don't want to capture that audio as well. So I'm going to mute the video capture device audio. And that is it. It's so much simpler than Mac without having to set up an aggregate or anything else. And just to show you, if I press play here, you'll be able to see the feed in output capture. And that's all you need to do for Windows. So that's your Windows covered as well. It's exactly the same, if not a bit easier. One thing I wanted you to know, especially on the Mac as well, is if you look at our preferences, it's going into the record section. So if you want to change the volume, we don't want to get anywhere near clipping. So I personally stay around minus 15 and I don't go past 10, minus 10. If you've got any issues with that, if you flick across, you can then turn this up and down, which means it's going to be a lot quieter. I like to have mine so it is the loudest it can be without going anywhere near. So I normally have mine around three and I'm quite happy with that. If you do need to go up, you can then go to advanced and go higher. I wouldn't suggest it personally, but it all depends on what's going on with yourself and your system. We haven't talked about monitoring when it comes to speakers, for instance. Now, I personally have the booth monitors out into the speakers. Therefore, if I do attach anything to the master and I make turn that up and down, it doesn't affect my speakers and it's independent. So, for instance, if I do another video and I talk to you about using an interface, this is when it's going to really come into play. At the moment, it doesn't matter too much, but it's a good practice to have that if you've got booth out, then use them for you then it doesn't matter what you do with them. You can have them as loud or as quiet as you want and it won't affect the output and more importantly, the input into a stream. But apart from that, it's about practicing, having fun and going on to your streaming. Please be advised, obviously you need to know about copyright laws and if you get shut down on certain platforms because of copyright, but that's something that you can read up on. I just wanted to show you how to do these things if needed. So that's how to stream using an S3, Tractor and OBS for no extra cost. Please comment below if you'd like to know how to use interfaces, how to go back into itself to record and stream, how to set up more cameras and layers in OBS or anything else. Just comment below and I'll happily help you where I can. Thanks very much. Stay safe, stay creative and see you next time.